Hello and welcome back to the House of the Stack podcast. Today it's time to talk about Rickon Stark, Davos Seaworth and the Skargosi in general. George, long time no see. How you been doing? How's it going? Pretty good. Awesome, awesome. So, are you into unicorns? Not really. <laughs> My cat is into it. Yeah, because apparently we are getting another tribe-like folk in Windsor Winter. Skagosi. To to do a little recap, Davos Seaworth meets up with Wyman Mendeley, and Wyman Mendeley commands him to bring him Rickon Stark, who supposedly is in Skagos, and that's where Davos is headed right now. We don't know much about Skagos, but we do know some little nuggets, some little bits and pieces here and there. The first thing I want to talk about is a quote from Roos Bolton. Roos mentions that only hot trees see half of what they do on Skagos. That's what he said to Fionn. So my first question or my first little wild shot in the dark is, is Bran going to connect with Rickon in Windsor Winter? Uh, yeah, they could be, you know, after he, he beefed up with the Jojen paste. <laughs> he, he could connect to um, Rickon, he could connect to Sweet Robin, he could connect to Theon, you know? Yeah, definitely. Got a lot of things going on. Definitely. Bran, what do you think I came all this way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not again, not again. But yeah, what if Bran is going to warn Rickon? Because if you remember, obviously in season 5 we got to see what happened at Hardhome. In the books we only heard about it. And I think that's a mystery that's going to be solved through the Skagos storyline. Because I imagine the wildlings are going to flee and seek asylum in Skagos. Because it's they could. not that far away. And it would make sense to connect the two storylines yeah we'll see how how they do on like either bear island or skagos because i don't, I don't know if those dudes can you know swim yeah that's another the thing. others yeah. yeah i imagine because otherwise why wouldn't they all just say it's skagos because i imagine skagos is going to be attacked by the others in windsor winter okay and that ultimately results in them joining Stannis because Stannis obviously is taking the threat to the north very seriously. So yeah. um, maybe Davos can pull out a little, like one of his fucking TED Talks from, I don't know, season seven. <laughs> it is between the living and the dead. And make no mistake, the dead are coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, the, the thing is whether if Davos and Rickon can make it back in time for Stannis' battle. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously not for for the Battle of Ice, but... Um, Winterfell, maybe? Yeah, it could be. Also, do you believe the Skargosi are cannibals? They're rumors, right? Yeah. The, the thing is, like, what is that? Like, uh, that is just um, what Davos has heard from Manderly. I don't know. Maybe they're nice. Um, yeah. I, I do think normally like a lot of these rumors are, um, you know, overblown, for example, like, um, like the Southerners will have a lot of biases against, you know, wildlings, whereas, you know, not all wildlings are cannibals, yeah. especially not. And yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's yeah. a reoccurring thing. Kind of thinking about, um, the rumors about Daenerys feeding children to her dragons and all. Yeah, but I don't think they are actually cannibals. What I think is possible would be that they are skin changers. Um, we got some similarities to Varamir Sixkins there, who also talked about it. Feasting on, yeah. on human flesh while in another body. Right. That could be a possibility. Yeah. But what I still don't get is why Osha would even bring Rickon to Skagos in the first place. Like, there seems to be a... There's gotta be a revelation there. You think um, Osha is hmm. from Skagos? Oh, you think so? Maybe. I mean, that would explain it, right? Yeah. yeah maybe she's... I mean, she could also probably see the North is gonna be, like, unstable under the Boltons or the possibilities of the Northern Houses turning him in, like, in the show, you know? Hmm. But still, with all these rumors, would you go there? Like that—that that doesn't seem too, uh, too safe. Yeah, I—I I figure she knows what's going on. Either that, or she wants to, freaking cook Rickon. I, I just want to know how that plays into you know Davos's deal with Manderly. 
you know, I don't care if like Manderly betrays Stannis in the end, but if Rickon comes through, then they definitely have a good chance of taking Winterfell. Definitely, and I, and yeah, I, I can already see uh, Rickon and Osha not wanting to go with Davos. By the way, because if they made it oh. this far, if they're not dead already, they're probably yeah. pretty comfortable there. So what will ultimately Yo. drive them to go with Davos is probably the the others attacking or something. That could be the case. So another little theory I read on Reddit was that Eddard's mother was actually half Skagosi. Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But but hear me out, hear me out. I mean, um, it's pretty interesting. It's it's it really is because okay. around a hundred years before our story. The Skargosi went into rebellion against Winterfell and right. they actually killed the Lord of Winterfell and a lot of soldiers there. So maybe there was some sort of marriage pact be- between a Flint and a Skargosi. And that's Rickon oh. Stark's entry. Oh, so maybe because because Skagos has the previous relationship with the Starks that Rickon will somehow be able to form an alliance with them. You know? Yeah, yeah, because like you don't you don't even have to be directly a Stark. You know, like the Mountain Clans is like Stannis. You claim to be Ned's friend. It's like whatever. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. another thing. Why didn't Rickon go to the Mountain Clans? That is one of the options, I guess. Because I I think doesn't one of the some of the Mountain Clans know where Rickon is? Do they? Don't think so. I thought so. I either want the flints or something where where like they didn't really reveal the information to Stannis or something like that. Although I couldn't remember clearly. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I only remember yeah. Theon's squire, the silent one. Um, Wax Pike. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What if Wax Pike just uh, completely sucked at aiming? Yeah. <laughs> because he threw the knife at the at the map. <laughs> what if he just sucks at, <laughs> at like his aim is completely ass and Rickon is in King's Landing yeah <laughs> but I'm curious man it's definitely there's some revelation there it's either the, the other is attacking we might learn something about the skin changing abilities of, of the Starks or something you think Rickon's different. gonna become like a warg like Bran yeah definitely Maybe not as good I, I feel like Rickon might be up to some you know I don't think they're just gonna kill him off like the show no, no, no. He's the wild yeah. one. So he's definitely... I mean, I mean, part of, politically speaking, he's important because, you know, Manderley is not going to pull out the rest of his cavalry for Stannis, if not for Rickon. Which yeah. lends me to think, how, how many people do you think, like, Manderley actually have? Hmm. Do you think it's going to reach the thousands or still, like, a few hundred? Yeah, a few hundred. I think a few hundred. All those battles. He has some men, but not, like... 3,000 or something. Yeah, I I mean, like, he did say, like, he was, he's been, like, you know, minting coins or uh, making, he, has he definitely has a lot of ships. Hmm. He has a lot of ships, and he has enough, like, high-quality cavalry, just don't know how many. Although, like, with the Boltons, I, I think if he has, like, even just, like, 800, it's going to make a lot of difference, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 800 men would aid Stannis in extreme fashion right now. Yeah, because right now Stannis is, like, ate all the horses, so he's just, like, straight up infantry. Pikemen. Hmm. <laughs> oh, he has a few horses, I guess, because he just arrested all the car Starks, right? They just use their horses. I do think... He, you know, as we said many times, uh, even if the North betrays Stannis, it's going to be like um, after the the battle. Yeah, definitely. Not not before. And definitely not. Before yeah, because end. before it's just not a productive thing to do. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Northern storyline, you have Jon Snow still being dead. You have Rickon in Skargos. And as we just mentioned, it's. There's something going on. Something is going to happen on that island. And yeah, then you have Stannis. Roos is still alive. You have the Greyjoys there. There's something going on. There's definitely some, yeah. something going to happen to the storyline of Asha and Theon. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. Ramsay. Um, Ramsay is the big wild card. Is he going to play a big part like in the show? Is he going to be killed by Theon is he oh it's it's a wild card right uh I don't think he's gonna be as overpowered as in the show but also Roos might still you know underestimate him 
which I don't understand why he would, though. You know, like, he freaking killed the merit. Like, why are you going to think you're the smartest guy ever? Not knocking on Roos. He is very smart, but, like... As long as we don't get a shirtless fight scene, I'm fine. No, but you're right. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't see Ramsey outplaying Roos in the, in the books. Because the, the Roos in the books is even more frightening than the one we got on the television show. And I rate his, uh, his intelligence quite, quite a bit. Yeah, but I, I do think he might have, like, um, blind spots. Because he said, you know, all of Ramsey's stupid friends are, like, loyal to Roos instead, uh, instead of Ramsey. You know, anything could happen if Stannis, let's say Stannis is going to do the fake, the fake out and the fray clothing and all and actually successfully takes Winterfell. then I think it's very likely that Ramsay will flee because Stannis handing out the, the final blow to Roos is not as rewarding as a start doing the deed or. Oh, really? I, I honestly think Stannis doing it to Roos will be um, more interesting for me. Because a hero doesn't always get the revenge, right? You know? Yeah, it makes sense. Because you, 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 when you, let's say you start reading the books, like as far as I was before season three aired, what, what you get the feeling is Rob is going to avenge Ned, you know? Yeah. And then he doesn't. He absolutely <laughs> fails. And, and then it's all because of Tywin. And then you think... Oh, okay, like someone else, some other Stark is going to stick it to Tywin. Then no, his own son stick, sticks it to him. And so I, I like these kind of ironies where not the exact person gets that revenge, you know. By also, that... Stannis avenging the North from the Greyjoys, that also is just not exactly the, the match, you know. If you're going conventional, then obviously have Jon Snow solve all the problems. But I feel like George R. R. Martin is... He has to give Stannis something to do. Oh, he, you know? and he will. Can't even just... if he dies in battle. Even if Stannis just accidentally gets shot by an arrow, the Mountain Clans are still going to push in. You know, They're not going to give up just because Stannis dies. I mean, that's yeah. true. Hugo Wool talked about bathing in Bolton blood. So, yeah, they're oh, He's going to be awesome. It's going to be him versus... Um, who's that dude in, in the Boltons who's, you know... Not that bad of a guy. He's just going about his business. His name is like Warwick Davis or something. But <laughs> not, but not. Let's see. House Bolton. It, Warwick it's something. Davis. Walton. I think it's Walton. Uh, let's see. Steel Shanks. Oh, oh Steel Shanks Walton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a good dude. He's like the description of him. I, I just like it. He's like, okay. He's like cold blooded, but he doesn't go out of his way to be a dick. You know? Yeah, kind of. Oh, like... he's in the show. He is in the show where he gets Jamie Lannister out of the bear pits. He's sick. Well, they <laughs> definitely didn't name him. They're just like Bolton dude number five. I think Roos might have name dropped him in the show. He just like Walton will like escort you to King's Landing or something. That awkward, you know, lunch or like Brienne has to cut his meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the in the pink dress. That lunch versus all the lunches in Breaking Bad, which is more awkward. Well, now, now, now that I think about it, it's actually pretty close. But yeah, you're uh, right. What you said about Stannis killing Roos. Right now, my take on Stannis is just like, do your best. You know, if it happens, whatever. But you know, like in the show, he didn't do his best. Okay, he didn't even finish eating his horses before start toasting the daughter. <laughs> Whereas in the books, he true. will actually do his best. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It's like, I keep thinking, you know, you have horses to eat, you know, just use the rest of the pikes, feed all your men and just freaking do your best. He you could at least take out most of the cavalry, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, there was absolutely no need to walk to Winterfell. Like what did he say? And the fact that, that, that Ramsey actually rolled out with the cavalry oh, is on. supposed to be like a good thing for yeah. Stannis yeah. if he played it well, you know? Dude, they played heroic music for the Boltons. Yeah, that <laughs> was so weird. heroic music for them. <laughs>
I was like, yeah, does that theme only show up once? Like yeah. sometimes in my brain canon, I just thought that was part of Stannis' theme. Nah, that's 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 the Bolton theme in yeah. a heroic fashion. Because you know, fuck Stannis. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So uh takes you back to 2015 when I was actually mad about that. To get back to Skagos for a minute here, do you mm -hmm. think that we will get a Night King? Because let's say the others attack Skagos. Is this the perfect opportunity to introduce us to such a character? Or do you think that's just a show thing to add a face to the others? I do think it might be necessary to have like a, a head of the others. I don't know how you would write chapters after chapters of battling just nameless enemies, you know? I was like, how many chapters can you write for that? Yeah, I'm just like, okay, they roll over this castle, they roll over that castle. I figure like half those chapters are going to be like letters. Just, you know, hey, I received a Raven Scroll. Now Deepwood Mott is gone. Because they, they have to take over like so many cities. I don't know how they will manage to write that. Yeah, and I, I don't think the war is going to end in the north. It just doesn't yeah, seem right. right with me. They're going to push through the neck, get Sweet Robin going, I guess. <laughs> Telepathic Sweet Robin magic going to save the day. I, I can't wait until we see Sweet Robin actually, you know, out maneuvering Harry. That will be <laughs> so satisfying because he thought he was the Giga Chen. But like <laughs> this tiny little kid is like, not so soon. Bro. Sweet Robin enters the main hall, throws Harry out the moon door, doesn't elaborate, just walks out. Doesn't elaborate, <laughs> walks away. <laughs> Dude, like, I feel like one of the later chap Sansa chapters where she actually gets to know Sweet Robin is like, this guy has thoughts and feelings. He's not just some dude. He actually has, like, a semblance of intelligence. Is more than what people assume. Hmm. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Because um, I feel like every time some like perfect scheme is going on, and then something goes wrong. Like Littlefinger thinks he really has this in the bag, and then like Sweet Robin just like tosses that guy out of the moon door. He's like, "What are you gonna do?" <laughs> <laughs> and then Bronze Yawn with a big breastplate shows up, <laughs> arrests everyone. For fuck's sake! I was I, I was waiting for that one, man. <laughs> yeah oh, gigantic God. like enormous fucking armor <laughs> i like how like despite the fact that he has a very little role um bronze yon is iconic oh he's very memorable. i feel like because in the show like everything is like toned down it's all like freaking leather sometimes it's hard to tell who's who because like roose bolton in the show just wears what the Starks wear, just like a tiny bit purple to hint at the pink thing. And Bronze Yon just has that breastplate that nobody <laughs> else wears. Yeah, he has the <laughs> breastplate that Robert was asking for in season one. Go find the breastplate stretcher! Now! <laughs> the breastplate stretcher? How long before he figures it out? Yeah, breastplate stretcher. Ironic, since <laughs> Bronze Yon really s sticks it to Robert, because... You know, his own son fought for Renly. Why, yeah. why the fuck do we keep talking about Bronze Yon <laughs> Royce's armor? It's like every podcast now. Every episode, man. Uh, Bronze Yon really is behind everything, though. Like the fact that Brienne had to kill his son to get out of Renly's camp. Yeah. I like how that's never mentioned again, even though they met in the show. It's like, <laughs> hey, you, you killed my son. I mean, that was... At least Tyrion acknowledged killing Mathis. Yeah, but... even though it's played off as a joke. Yeah, I was I was gonna yeah. mention that. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, be I thought the show did might not still be didn't... roaring. <laughs> like <laughs> the fuck. All right, so to wrap this one up, what's our conclusion? What's going to happen in Skagos? Is Davos going to succeed? Are they going to have a battle against the others there and have to flee? Are the wildlings arriving? What's your point of view? I think Davos is gonna succeed. Whether they're going to make make it to Winterfell at uh, on time is another story, but they have to succeed because that storyline is too interesting for them to just drop the ball and not elaborate. Brings up Skagos, doesn't say anything, walks out. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I think 
it's just way too out of the blue for it not to be important and right um it can connect the others it can connect bran and rickon again and it can also connect rickon back into the whole northern politics so and that's the only reason i think george chose Skagos because it's a opportunity to reveal what actually happened in hard home yeah it's also the entry to um the the actual winds of winter if you know what i mean yeah that's pretty sweet so let's wrap this one up thank you guys for watching see you in the next one